When it comes to the ultimate life goal as a Buddhist, a lot of people would say nirvana, a number of people would say enlightenment. Are they the same or are they different? To be honest, it has to go back what's actually Buddhist belief. The Buddhists believe in something called the cycle of rebirth or samsara. This cycle that we are living in right now called us to be reborn again and again and again. So after we were born, we grow up, we started to develop desire. From desire, it becomes attachment, become lamentation, we grow into sufferings, we go aging, sickness, and death. And depends on what karma that we have accumulate in that particular life, which will result into how we are going to be reborn again, better or worse. But eventually, we're going to have to go to the same thing again from growing up, growing desire, uh, love, fear, never it's different thing, aging, sickness, and die again. So this is actually the cycle that we have. We usually compare the cycle of rebirth to a prison. This prison that we live in, we can't escape. We born and we die here. We born in this prison again and we die in this prison again and again and again. So if you talk about what is the ultimate life goal of a Buddhist, the life that ultimate goal is to break out of this prison of rebirth. So when we break out of that prison, we no longer be reborn again. We end sufferings from the cause of it. So that's what people call reaching attainment of nirvana or attain enlightenment. Basically, all in all is all about to end rebirth. The word nirvana comes from the word niravana, which means without binding or no longer being bind to this to this cycle of rebirth. And that is comes to this concept of enlightenment. Because when the person enlightenment, we have to go back into the concept that everyone has body and mind. The body made composed of the four elements, earth, wind, water, fire. They are contaminated. They are not pure. Our mind is called vinyana tattu or knowing element or consciousness. This element is also not pure. It is contaminated with something called gilesa or defilements from tanha, lopa, tosa, moha, desire, craving, greed, hatred, jealousy, ego, delusion. So this thing kept missing up our mind and generate negative thoughts. And from negative thoughts become negative words and become negative actions. So because of that, it gives negative outcome, which make our life in the prison a lot worse. And we continue to live in this vicious cycle. So the concept of enlightenment is when we are able to keep the mind stand still. Once it stands still, it's being purified automatically over and over until it reaches to the absolute state of purity or basically the original state. And that is the mind when it can really reach the enlightenment and become one with the Dhamma that we have within ourselves. That true knowledge, that true nature, also called Dhamma, it's already exists within ourselves. But it is so pure. And in order to reach it, our mind has to be as pure as the Dhamma until we become one with each other. So that's what it means by attainment of enlightenment. And because when the mind reach the Dhamma and stay there permanently, there is no more contamination, there is no more defilement because it's like light always on. So there is no place for shadow to appear. And that's when a person passes from this body, then it goes to the state of Nirvana. So that's why this is the ultimate life goal of a Buddhist. How do we attain it? To attain this part of the the enlightenment, it comes from practice of good deeds. Basically, it starts from dana, sila, pavana, or generosity, keeping self-discipline, and practice, practicing uh, mental development or meditation. The first two is all about life. Everything that we do generate positive and negative outcome. So at least in this life, we try to cultivate as many good karma as we can because at least it will help our life in the future to be a lot better and make our life for the practice become a lot easier. At the same time, while we developing these positive actions from generosity, from refraining ourselves to self-discipline, 
we are keeping our defilements or, or the negative contamination, contamination under control. At least, it no longer has influence over my mind and my decision making. At least when I buy something because I need it, not because I, I want it. So that's the difference. So when we started to take control of the mind, and then we are able to also reduce the amount of defilements that we manifested. And then when we started to practice more meditation or practice mental development, it gets purer and purer over time. But of course, normally after we open our eyes, we start to yell at each other, we gossip, we hype people back, we start to do something bad again, and that is normal. So that's why a person who reaches the state of enlightenment is when they are there permanently. So generosity, keeping precept, and practice of meditation. All of this has to be practiced with endeavor, with perseverance, with determination. It's not like, oh, let's say every birthday I will be generous, I do the charity once, and another 364 days of the year I be so messed up. It doesn't really work that way. If a person aims to reach that goal, to, be, to, to, reach, to reach that life goal of enlightenment, at least they should start by cultivating leaders one by one. However, we may not be able to reach enlightenment in this life. Then what should I do? What can I do? So that is also coming from another teaching, which can be summarized and break, broken down into that there are three life goals that we can pursue. Number one, let's call it go on earth. When we are born, we want to be wealthy. We want to look we want to look good, we want to be strong and healthy, we want to have lots of good friends, and we want to be famous, right? We want to have all these good things. We want to be beautiful, we all want this. This doesn't come easily. It depends on past karma or past action. And that means at least I want to achieve this, this goal on earth, these basic goals that I have in this life and future life, in this way, the physical goal. So it means at least I can keep my self-discipline, I can be generous, and it helped me to secure this goal on earth or this physical goal a lot easier. The second part, when I die, I don't want to go to hell, I want to go to heaven. Do you want to go to hell after you die? So of course you're not. Nobody wants to go to hell, everybody wants to go to heaven. So at least the second goal is that if I die, I will reach the state of heaven. Of course, even though heaven is just a temporary state, but it's good and it's a lot better than going to hell for temporarily. So to go to heaven is also come from the practice as a person, as a human being, that what do we do, how, what karma that we cultivate, and that will be the accumulation of energy that will help us to be in heaven. So that is the second goal. A lot of time people tend to focus only on these two goals, go on earth and go in the sky or go to heaven. But the last one, and the most important one, is the goal in the outer space, which is to end rebirth permanently. So at least right now, each day that you live in your life, take a little look, reflection on your life. How do you spend your time to achieve the three goals? Because now that we know we have the goal to pursue, then it's a, the matter of how do we achieve that goal. Do we, do we really devote ourselves, put an effort into achieving those goals? Or are you still playing games all day, shaking Facebook and get jealous over people post the whole time, get depressed about life that I don't achieve as good as others? Or we emphasize on how I can improve myself to pursue one goal at a time, whether it's going to be go on earth, in the sky, or in the outer space. And that is important of setting goal. Now that if now that everybody set their goal already, it's a matter of doing it. Commitment. One thing at a time that we develop that sense of commitment. If you can do that little task, it will help you to achieve the major task.